Recent call dances elsewhere shed light on Yellowstone. Based on geological mapping and mineral dating, we know that the Yellowstone caldera formed 631,000 years ago. But how did the caldera collapse? Observational and monitoring data from several caldera collapses on other volcanoes in the 20th and 21st centuries provide clues. Many of the concepts and models used to explain past caldera forming eruptions and subsequent collapses were formulated by USGS scientists Robert L. Smith and colleagues, based primarily on their research in the Valles Caldera in New Mexico. USGS scientist Peter Littman's research in the tertiary caldera of the San Juan Mountains in Colorado sheds light on many of the fundamental processes linking large volume eruptions and caldera collapse. Geological mapping conducted by USGS scientist Bob Christensen suggests that the collapse of the Yellowstone caldera 631,000 years ago in response to an eruption of approximately 1,000 cubic kilometers, 240 cubic miles, of magma occurred within an hour a day. However, recent field observations tell the story which is more complicated regarding eruptions that form large calderas. We can learn more about past volcanic eruptions and caldera collapses from observations of more recent eruptions. The 1912 Novarupta eruption on the Alaska Peninsula was the largest in the 20th century, with a volcanic explosivity index value of 6. There were many eyewitnesses to the eruption, including observations made several years later by Robert Griggs. About 15 cubic kilometers, 3.5 cubic miles, of magma erupted over 60 hours. An interesting observation is that the caldera did not collapse beneath Novarupta. Instead, magma spread laterally from beneath Mount Katmai, about 10.6 kilometers, about 6.6 .6 miles, to the northeast and collapsed due to lateral drainage from the magma chamber. When uncovering details of Novarupta's eruption and the geological history of the region decades later, USGS scientists Wes Hildreth and Judy Fierstein were able to use information from eyewitness accounts, and in contrast to geological mapping at Yellowstone, they mapped much less of the landscape. Eroded and less altered rock, In the late 20th and early 21st centuries, the establishment of volcano monitoring networks allowed scientists to capture some caldera collapses in unprecedented detail. One of the best examples is the eruption of Kilauea volcano on Hawaii Island in 2018. Data collected with seismometers, tilt meters, high-speed global positioning system, GPS, stations, and gas sensors helped document preliminary activity. Caldera growth and subsurface lateral magma transport from Kilauea's summit to the eruption site in the volcano's lower east rift zone. Not unlike what happened in Katmai and Novarupta 106 years earlier. Over the three months following the eruption, the caldera at Kilauea's summit shrank by more than 500 meters (1,640 feet). Many types of monitoring instruments captured the onset of subsurface magma transport. Development of the geometry of the receding caldera and its faults, and the amount of magma erupted during the collapse of the Bararbunga caldera beneath the Vatnajökull glacier in Iceland in 2014-2015. As at Katmai and Kilauea, Magma spread laterally beneath the surface away from the caldera, erupting 1.5 cubic kilometers, 0.35 cubic miles, of basaltic magma at Holaran, about 40 kilometers, 25 miles, to the northeast.
other caldera collapses in the 21st century recorded by volcano monitoring networks include the collapse of Miyakijima Volcano in Japan in 2000 and the collapse of the Dolomue Crater on Piton de la Fournaise Volcano on Réunion Island in the Indian Ocean in 2007. Due to the increased capacity to monitoring volcanoes from space, even the 2018 eruption and caldera awakening, as opposed to collapse, at the remote Sierra Negra volcano in the Galapagos Islands, Pacific Ocean, was documented in great detail by a variety of instruments. The ability to capture and document caldera collapse with modern monitoring networks provides scientists with a variety of data to refine the initial models proposed by Smith, Lippmann, Christensen, and others. Although a large caldera forming eruption like the one that resulted in the Yellowstone caldera has never been witnessed, geologists can use modern examples, coupled with insights from the geological history of the Yellowstone region, to better understand how caldera collapse occurs.